Who was right? Ben was right. Okay, I was on the History Channel last night watching that Edgar Casey special. And then I picked up one of my good books that has it's a, col a collection of four books about him. A prophecy, Reincarnation, Spirituality, um, and The Secrets of the Mind. So, okay, page 616. He was asked, what is the future going to have for humanity? You know, if you can already do this stuff. And he says, um, all of us will be able to see each other's auras. But also, something I have been preaching for over two years now. That since we can all pick up on each other's vibes, that we won't be able to lie to each other anymore. He says that everyone will be able to see... Um, when you plan to tell them a lie, even a little white one, we will all have to be frank, for there will no longer be such a thing as deceit. And I thought this was my original idea, but no, Casey was the first, okay? He also said, he, he asked specifically what I asked. He says, how many of our vices will persist when all of them are known to everyone? And in my video a while back, 2012, what if we share each other's feelings? Huh. I said, if you're naturally a good person, then you wouldn't care if you shared your, your thoughts with everyone because you, the whole point of life was to share your positive vibe, but it will suck for negative people who have negative thoughts, okay? Um, but that's just the beginning, bro. For the longest time, I really felt like I had been controlling the vibes of people like animals, I can, I have a natural ease about me. They're totally comfortable with me. I have made babies stop crying. And I can really concentrate on someone and then they'll just kind of turn around because they'll feel an impulse. I swear to Jesus or God or Allah or Nietzsche, Jesus gets codal. This is no lie. And then I read Edgar Casey says, one day I told her that, I could force an individual to come to me, to me, and by seeing another person doing something, uh, you can mentally induce that person to do it. This is my experience, okay? Uh, David Wilcock hasn't even talked about it. He probably has, but I know I've experienced it. This, this is no, no joke, okay? Edgar Casey is completely right about our intuition. But he said, he said you can't abuse that power because you, you should only do things that you yourself would do. You can't be like, go get this towel for me. You know, like in Starship Troopers, the dorky Dookie, Doogie Hauser guy tells the ferret to go climb up his uh, mom's leg. And then he's like, yeah, we can't do it to humans yet. Okay, whatever, we can. All right. It's just going to be more intensified. Edgar Casey said the future, our, our five senses, will broaden. Okay, so those implications are tremendous. It's what I was preaching, and it's what Edgar Casey apparently already knew. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about Nostradamus and Edgar Casey's astrological charts. Um, well, they're not only the year of the ox, just like David Wilcott. But um, they both have Jupiter and Mars conjuncting in the exact opposite sign. So that means their Mars and Jupiter are opposing each other's Mars and Jupiter. Huge archetypes, okay. You know, Wilcock has Mars and Jupiter in the same sign as Casey and Moon and Taurus and all that stuff. But also, they both have Pluto... Um, conjuncting their moon, once again, opposing each other. Casey's moon, Pluto's in Taurus. Nostradamus, moon, Pluto, Scorpio, Sagittarius, cusp. Huge archetypes, my friend. Um, and they both have Uranus and Saturn less than 30 de degrees away. You know, that's kind of nice. Um, and they both have Uranus, the planet of Aquarius, revolutionary change, in 12th house, the sign of the subconscious. Okay, I find it very interesting. People always wondered why Casey, you know, knew all this surgical terminology while he was asleep, asleep, induced in that trance, okay? The, the reason is, later on he found out that he was from Atlantis. So, 
when he enters the universal subconscious mind, he picks up on his past life's knowledge. He had no knowledge of any doctoral kind of vocabulary. But when he was asleep, he was talking about everything and cured it. By the way, I said, you know, he only had 2,500 accurate reading. He had 14,000 readings. I was heavily mistaken because um, I read in some other book. 14,000. The man is not a man. He is a medium for the, the universal Gaia mind. I mean, Thomas Edison went to him to, to find out electricity instead of naturally finding it like Tesla. I hate Edison sometimes because of Tesla's amazing discoveries that he discredited. Besides the point, George Gershwin went to Casey. Rockefeller, okay? People knew, and then nowadays people are like, oh, no, no famous people do shit except Ra the Reagans had astrologers. whoop de doo Of course, Casey could memorize complete books <laughs> when he slept on them. What is that? Can you, can you prove that to me? Skeptic Magazine? No. I'm sure you dodge Edgar Casey every chance you get. Okay, I believe the reason he um, could memorize the books by just sleeping on it is because since he was in touch with the Gaia, um, the energy from that book was already spread out throughout the world. So when he was asleep, the book itself has something about it that um, you pick up on. Like, there's something strange about the idea that um, if a thought is out there, it's there to be picked up on immediately. And Emerson once said in his journals, I actually fear that I've uh, created a new thought in this world, in a kind of jokingly sense, okay? We are here to create. And if McKenna, if the whole DMT experience is about these elves telling you to make these um, creations with just your vocals and your energy, perhaps the whole point of existence is to just create new material, okay? Um, but this is very vital to to my philosophies and my beliefs they're no longer beliefs anymore because I experience a belief is something you just want to believe because you think it's cool my beliefs stem from my experience my theories stem from my experience like Nietzsche says um, God if only Nietzsche knew about all this stuff then skeptics wouldn't always hang on to him you know but uh, but on the, on the other side Nietzsche talked about uh, these philosophers and men of scholars spreading a lack of spirituality like a blanket. So all that implies is that Nietzsche was pro-spirituality. Look into your heart. He didn't want to use the word soul. He said the body is enough. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know if you knew about that third eye. <laughs>